In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your GitHub account, how to create a repository, and how to manage your files inside of that repository. So go to github.com, then type in your email address. Now click sign up for GitHub. I'm going to click the continue button and create a password. And I'm going to create a username. And I'll say I want to get the product information. And I'll click continue. Solve the puzzle to verify that you're a human. Start the puzzle. I think that looks like the spiral galaxy to me. OK, and I have to do it again. And click create account. So now I've got to check my email and see if I got the code. I put the code in, and then it immediately took me to this uh, page here. And I'll just say I'm working with two to five people and I am a teacher and I'm going to click continue uh, what specific features I'm interested in collaborative coding and um, automation there's all these other things that you can select you can go ahead and just select this one the free I'm gonna go ahead and do that that's kinda cool I feel like I'm flying through the galaxy alright so now I'm in my github account what I want to do is I want to create a repository a repository allows me to put all of the code that I write and I can track the changes and create different branches and I can also work collaboratively with others who are helping me with my code project let's go ahead and click on create repository and I'm gonna call this uh, bottle underscore app it tells me that's available and right now I'm gonna make it private but you could make it public if you want anyone to see it I'm gonna add a readme file and it says this will set main as the default branch so as I mentioned before you can create multiple branches within github and it creates a main branch by default and a git ignore file will determine which files don't get uploaded to github from your project okay and then I'll choose a license and I'll just select the GNU general public license 3.0 on git ignore template I'm gonna just say this is gonna be Python and then I'll create repository my repository has been created and now I can click on the title of my repository and I can see the three files that were created by default my dot git ignore my license and my readme the next step is to load the github desktop which we'll do now Go to desktop.github.com and then click download for Windows or whichever version you happen to have and it will get sent to my downloads directory. I'm currently using the Edge browser. I'll go to that folder and I'm going to go ahead and run the executable. You'll get a little splash screen like this that GitHub Desktop is being installed and that it will launch once it is done. Now that our GitHub has launched, we want to sign in to GitHub from here. So what we're doing is we're telling GitHub Desktop which repositories are ours. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and authorize all these things. Okay, and so put in my password. It may already know what my username is since I'm, I've been logged into GitHub on this machine already. So I go ahead and I've now signed in. So now I need to configure Git. Now Git is the software that runs on your machine that powers uh, GitHub Desktop and tracks all your changes. And GitHub Desktop is the interface that sits on top of Git. So we've got these different options, create a tutorial, tutorial repository, clone a repository, create a new repository, add an existing. Well. I've already got a repository right here that I created, so I'm gonna click on that one. And then what you do is you click on clone. And what you when you clone, what it does is it pulls down the repository as it exists on GitHub and creates a local copy on your machine. In this case, we only have three files, the .gitignore file, the readme.md file, and the license file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on clone and this is my remote repository address and this is my local address where it's going to create uh, the local copy of my repository you can change that location if you don't like it the other thing you could do you could click on github.com and you could just select the repository there it's kind of the same thing and i'll click clone and so what's happening is those local files have been copied to that directory and look up here the current branch is main it created a branch called main and it's 
pulling down those files to my local machine. So what I typically do first is I create a development branch. So I'm just gonna call that dev and create the new branch. And what this will allow me to do is to work on my development branch. And once I've tested it and I'm happy with it, then I can push that to my main branch. So I've created this branch locally. I'm gonna publish this branch to GitHub. I'll click on that button. And now I can do what's called creating a pull request. A pull request is a request to compare the changes of whatever your branch you're on. See, I'm currently on dev, and I wanna compare those to see if there's any conflicts, and then I can push those, publish those to the main branch. Well, right now, I haven't made any changes. I haven't made any changes to that repository. So what I can do is I can open uh, the repository in an external editor. I use JetBrains products, so it's seen that I already have that installed. But I can simply click on Show and Explorer, okay? And you can see that in that repository that it created locally, it copied the files from GitHub. Here's my gitignore, my license file, and my readme.md. And then this .git directory is where all the branching stuff happens. I don't have to worry about it. GitHub Desktop will run all the Git commands for me when I'm dealing with my various branches and it will also track changes. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna right click on the readme file and edit that with Notepad++, which is a free editor. So right now my readme file, all it has is a top level heading and the title, which is bottled out app. Readme.md means that this is in markdown format, which is a simplified HTML that we use on GitHub. So I want you to add a second level heading. That's the th same thing as doing this in HTML, heading two. But we're just gonna do it like this. And this is a practice repository, which will help us learn how to use GitHub. Now I'm going to save that file. If I go back to GitHub desktop, this is the great thing. GitHub desktop tracks the changes that we just made. It says in the readme file, this is what we had before in the red, just bottle app. And here is what we've added. We've added a, a line and we've added a second level heading. So what I wanna do is I wanna push my changes up to GitHub in the cloud so that I have my copy in the cloud. So I'll just say added second level heading to the file. So I'm gonna commit my changes to the development branch. That's my current branch, and we'll let that run. Now what I wanna do is I wanna push this out to Origin. Origin is my GitHub repository in the cloud. So I'm gonna push that to Origin. Now behind the scenes, there are a whole bunch of Git commands that are running. GitHub Desktop simplifies things so you can just run it through this interface without having to know all of the Git commands. Now it says the current branch is already published to GitHub. Create a pull request to propose and collaborate on your changes. When I create a pull request, what I'm doing is I'm sending a request to the owner of this project uh, to see if he or she will approve my changes. And since I am the publisher, I am the owner of this, as long as there's no conflicts, it said, okay, I don't see any big conflicts between dev and main, I can click create pull request. If I were a collaborator on this project, this message would go to the person who owns the project or the reviewer. They would review the changes that you made and decide whether or not to approve them. The branch has no conflicts with the base branch, so I'm gonna merge the pull request, meaning that the changes I made to my development branch will get pushed to the main or production branch. And I don't really need to leave a comment here, so I'm just gonna click merge pull request. I'm gonna confirm the merge, and it says your pull request successfully merged and closed. Now you could delete your development branch if you wanted and then recreate it when you work on it again, but I never do that. I just leave the, de the development branch open because you're working on it all the time. So if I click on the code button here, here are my three files, and you can see that the readme file was edited two minutes ago. I can click on the readme file and I can see how it has changed with my second level heading.